But we were talking about where you're from and living in different places, right? So do you feel like South Carolina is a good place to be as a young creative and entrepreneur? Or do you feel like it's harder to make it out of here? Man, it's yes. hard to make it out of anywhere. Yeah. I love Greenville. What's I up? love South Carolina. I know we all got this attitude here. We, I think we all can agree that it's hating at times, but mm-hmm. that's anywhere. And I think for Greenville and South Carolina specifically, we've had a lot of people blow up out of here, yes, but we haven't really had that huge takeoff that yeah. launched everybody into success. That put everybody on the so map. I think right mm-hmm. now, everybody just got this weight on their shoulders that they want to be a part of it. I, don't, mm-hmm. I think sometimes it might be channeled the wrong way, but I feel like us down here, we got a lot of good intentions behind what we do. I'm rocking with the South for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. If you could live anywhere else in the United States, where would you live? New York. Why? It stinks in New York. I just came into New York in August. Oh, my gosh. I've I've always wanted to live in New York City in a high rise. I know it's expensive out there. I ain't coming until I make it. Manhattan, (laughs) Manhattan, like, I don't know. It's it's the big jumbotrons for me. One of my biggest dreams is to see myself. Times Square, my album about to drop. You know, I'm posed up or whatever. Right there, yeah. Times Square is a vibe. I went and smoked joints in Times Square. But it stinks, like I said. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's it like so. It's so I mean, like what's that road to Greenville that always stink? <laughs> what's that shit called? So man, you was in the recording studio in like this LA. So what kind of music can we expect from you, like coming soon? Ooh, put me on the spot. Um, definitely, what to expect coming mm-hmm. soon? Okay, is going to be. You good? You okay. too. All right. Definitely, what to expect coming soon is going to be setting the tone. Okay, that's all I can really say. Okay. I'm not gonna give too much away, but just know this is gonna set the tone. It's gonna set the Head tone. knocking, speeding down the road. Be careful because sure, sure. twelve might be right there, and you can't blame <laughs> me on your ticket. <laughs> so yeah, really yeah. setting the tone. So what do you feel like is the biggest difference from the first song you made to the last song you made? Hmm. Um, for one, I I was a lot younger, and also like like I said that the sounds, the way I change up my sound all the time. Mm-hmm. I think the first song I ever made was like. A remake of X, one of XX Ten Thousand songs. Really, what song? Jocelyn Flores. I know that song. Yeah, it's like really melodic, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I know which one you're talking so, about. So, but yeah, it was recreating one of those into now. I mean, the last song I dropped was like it. So, yeah. Okay. Like upbeat, urban, pop kind of For sure. thing. I do a lot of different stuff. I don't. Know. <laughs> so, if you could do anything besides making music, what lane would you want to find yourself in? I think I would want to find myself probably in like, like I said, like the film industry, Mm -hmm. but not necessarily on camera. Like I said, I only want to be on camera once or twice if there's a Grown Ups remake, (laughs) because I feel like I can do good. Grown Ups is a classic ass movie. But I want to be in the film industry, but behind the scenes, writing scripts, things like that. For sure. horror, like I said. Man, you just said something. Everybody want to be like in front of the camera, right? Yeah. They don't want to be behind the scene because yeah. it's a team thing. <laughs> yeah. So that's very like, you know, like this is extremely like, you know, like imperative that you said that because it's like yeah. everybody going to get their shine. Everybody going to yeah. get their bread, right? So it's like, for you to say that, man, it's like very like just humbling. So what type of advice can you give like just somebody when they on this journey of being like a creative artist? Try to, and I know this might be cliche, but like try to remain as authentic as you possibly can. Like, right. yes, take people's opinions. Yes, be inspired by other people in their work, but allow anything and everything you do to come from genuine within yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, don't try to fake anything. Don't try to be like anybody else because then it's not going to come out right and you're never really going to start to go for it the way you want. You will yeah. only see yourself driving harder and harder when you like, this me, this my work, this what I did. So right. remain true to yourself for sure. For so, sure. Have you always had that insight? Since you started or it took time to gain that? I think it took time to gain that, definitely. I mean, when you're growing up, like, listening to a lot of strong female or women, I'm learning, I'm, I'm working on that too. Yeah. My little sister corrected me on that, why you, the difference, but. Can you tell the yeah, audience yeah, the, difference, the difference, please? Please, enlighten us. So, shout out to my little sister, but also shout out to a lot of people on TikTok. So yeah. I learned myself because me, I was one of the type of girls that would say female all the time. I mm-hmm. didn't think anything of it and For it sure. offended yeah. me. But when you look up the definition biologically a female is just something that can have a baby mm. whereas a woman is it's, it's basically looked at in more of like a humane way yeah a female can also be a dog which you consider oh, yeah i get what you're saying now mom to a dog you know yeah that I mean? can be just tight disrespectful give birth. that's the way i heard it from tiktok so that's the easiest way to explain it okay yeah, that's deep. Just, it's yeah. gonna take us all a long time to stop looking saying it like that but yeah like I'm yeah myself too so for all the ladies out there that i ever yeah. called a female yeah. i apologize <laughs> Ahead, bro. You, huh? you kind of threw me off of that, but 
Do you feel like uh, today in 2022 you can disagree with people? I mean, you can, but it seems to be frowned upon. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, I get some people do be saying some off the wall stuff, but I do think that's one thing that that I hate. Things have gotten extremely sensitive. You mm-hmm. can't even dis- you can't even tell somebody you don't like their shirt and they asked you without it being a whole problem. Right. I think that people have gotten too concerned with what with what other people are saying and how it's making them feel because sometimes people are getting worked up for nothing. For sure. Exactly. Like, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I'm about to say, people just take things personally, right? Exactly. They don't look at it as growing pains. They don't look at it as self-like development. Exactly. You know I mean? I hate to say it, but everybody is narcissistic. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say Z can be narcissistic for I can. Oh, damn, it's we all, we all can, can in some way. You say it's fucked, though. Form. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't put me in there. I'll just play, bro. Like, you know, like, because I say that because, you know, we both got high confidence. And sometimes, I, you know, like, our confidence got mistaken for arrogance. Yeah. Yeah. And you got confidence, too. And, yeah. and somebody may be like, man, she arrogant. But yeah. really, you just, yeah, you got to have. myself. Yeah. Like, you got to have a lot of faith in yourself when yeah. you're chasing yeah. your dreams, for real. Yeah. I think you have to have that. I think you have to have the audacity to believe in yourself. Because you a lot of people don't. You do. And when you do, like, people... If they insecure, they're going to look at you as believing in yourself for all the things you just mentioned. Like, he's confident. He's arrogant. He's cocky, like. But it's just because you don't feel the same way about yourself that I feel about me. And you can't. What's what's it called when you, when you like, relay your emotions onto someone else? It's called, like, I can't think of it. Projecting. Projecting your emotions. Like, that's exactly what that is. I feel like when people call you that confident. Yeah. I'm not confident, but arrogant or like cocky. Fears. Yeah, they're projecting their fears and their emotions onto you. Exactly. You can't allow others' projection to be your reflection. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like the biggest uh, projections today are like, I have nothing against like LGBTQ community mm-hmm. or like say anti. And the latest one is like being an anti-Semite. But like those are just projections. Yeah. But when it comes to it, we should be able to agree to disagree or you can have your ideology and yeah. I can have mine. I really do feel like careful now you know i really do feel like you're allowed to believe in what you want to believe in as Mm -hmm. long as your views aren't intentionally inflicting harm on other people like just because you don't agree with a certain community's sexuality here nor there you should not purposefully attack or belittle people based on that but if you have your own view and you have your own opinion you're okay to believe that whatever you want to believe in but also know that sometimes your own opinion and your own beliefs can if if it's not aligned with facts it can be ignorant for sure. So at least like I think people just need to do a good a better job at like not imposing their hate and their bitterness and their misunderstanding or disagree onto other people. Like For sure. it's okay to have your own opinions and stuff like that. I just feel like just don't be harmful intentionally. Don't be mean to people. Oh okay. god, stop know? all that projecting out there yeah. and that mean negative energy and shit. And be willing like to grow too, because the day that you start learning is the day that you become ignorant, man. I exactly. feel like you know at least be open to it. Like, okay, I see what you're saying, but I'm still not gonna take it in. But man, yeah. I still learn something. Though. You know what yeah, I'm saying? exactly. Where I'm not gonna make you feel bad because that's who you are. Live your life. I just don't understand it. That's okay. Okay. You know? Yeah. So, so we're back from a commercial break. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I was listening to one of your past interviews, Ada, and you have like a lot of admiration for your dad in a way that he helps you. So. Yeah. And like in my journey, my mom wants to become more and more involved in this. She want to be my stylist. She'd be giving me questions mm-hmm. in the morning when I get off from work, even when I don't want to talk. It's always she's pouring into me. So how important is like having that parent around that can pour into you and like really support you within your craft and not trying to uh, mold you into what they think you should be instead yeah. of just letting you be what you want to be? I think it's something that is for one off top, you have to never take for granted. Because mm-hmm. right. there are a lot of people like who don't even have their parents or don't have a parent or don't have parents that are supportive at all of what they want to do. So yeah. if you have that type of foundation and support in your life, you always, for one, have to be appreciative of that. And honestly, my dad is the reason. I, I have so much, I give him so much credit for what I'm doing because he is the reason. Like, mm-hmm. Ever since a little kid, my dad my dad would bribe me, y'all, with $20 at the family barbecue cookouts yeah. to get me to just come up there and sing for everybody. And when I was little, it was like, yeah, why do I got to do this? And then I realized, look at me now. So like, yeah. to have my dad always, you know, giving me advice, tips, learning new things as what he can do as a dadager and all of that. Like, a dadager. I'm, <laughs> I'm extremely, like, blessed for that. Like, my dad is definitely the forefront of a lot of why I'm doing this. So Most definitely. Uh, you want to do the OPL segment, Zay? Yeah, let me check it out. Hold on. And 
Yeah, let's do the OPL segment. For so you, I'll start it. So the OPL segment stands for like the three letters in our name, official site fashion. For the O, want to ask you, what is something official that you feel like is underrated that more people should know about? What is something official that's underrated that more people should know about? Yeah. Yo. Okay, before I before I answer this, what do you mean by that? So like, what's something like when we say official, we want to mean like what is something that you feel like is solidified? It's something that's authentic that that has great meaning to it that is just underrated. Like people don't give it enough attention, or it's just undiscovered. So it really could be anything: person, yeah. place, thing, a principle you live by, a quote. Guys got deep ears. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think something that is official but is really underrated would definitely have to be like, okay, I know this might not be what you guys are literally looking for. It's okay. But journaling. You see, that's, that's a good okay. one. Like, we all journal. Like, it's almost like a way of talking to yourself. Yeah. Like, like seeing your thoughts out loud onto something. And I don't know. It's just like really important to me. It's something I swear by. I yeah. live by. It helps me realize when I'm tripping, when I'm doing too much, when I'm valid, yeah. keeping myself accountable. So for me, it's journaling. I okay. Like it's very valid. It's you thought you was giving us a wild answer or something? Yeah, I thought I was about to say Nah, we be crazy. doing that shit too. We yeah. be journaling. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I heard the saying like when you put something on paper, like when you put a pen on paper, like it's really like etching it down in your brain. Yeah. And it's in your yeah. subconscious. Yeah. yeah, and it's most it's more likely to come through when you write, write stuff down. Mm-hmm. So most that's something we preach to our audience. I write my thoughts down. I keep one of those yellow notepads to write shit down. And Everything you write down gonna come true. I'm a firm believer in that, mm-hmm. as well as what you speak. So right. exactly. words are powerful. Exactly. Yeah. So the next one is psychological. So what's <laughs> any type of mindset, like advice, would you give like somebody? Me. Mm-hmm. Mindset advice. Oh Lord, you're talking to a Sagittarius. Boy. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but have no fear. Okay. And I know that might be like, like people are like, what? What do you mean have no fear? But like. If you're going to bet on anybody, bet on yourself psychologically. Like, because literally all you have is yourself. Yes. Like, some, like, I know we all have our own struggles, our own reasons. I'm not trying to get deep into this emotionally or talk about baggage. It's more so just like, if you don't have anything, please have confidence in yourself. Yes. Yeah. Wake up and look in the mirror and realize that you're here, you're existing. So make the most out of it. Like, stand up and be firm in who you are. And use that to power you forward. Like, if you don't have nothing else, you have yourself. Like, I'm so big on that. For sure. Why do you think people struggle with that? I think it has a lot to do with the way they were raised, what was projected onto them, like we talked about before, um, comparing themselves to other people. I think it's it's a plethora of things. So, yeah. All right. Man, you're killing it with these answers. So, the last one is L for stands for the fashion, of course, right? So if you could describe your style in three or less words, and like your style is an artist, like more so, what's your style in three or less words? And rate your drip one through ten too. Okay, my drip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my style as an artist, I would start with like mysterious. Okay. Because I'm always changing up my sound. Intentional, because I'm never putting out any lyrics that don't mean anything. Y'all will never catch me doing. Okay. Not just get on that mumble stuff. No, I refuse. <laughs> you will have to take me alive before you see me just saying stuff I don't agree with or I don't believe in. And that's a good word. I got only one more. <laughs> um, very lively. Like okay. I feel like okay. from the way I use my voice to what I'm saying to the beats I choose, it's very. It's all lively. It makes you feel alive. It makes you want to do something. So, For yeah. sure, that was a great answer, Jada. And where, where can they find you if they want to listen to their music, your music? They want to follow you on Instagram, TikTok. What, what are your handles? Everything is Jada Marion um, across the board. So. Most definitely. And we didn't even ask the cliche question. So what are the artists you want to work with? We didn't ask that question. Oh, like, my God. I, I thought y'all would never ask. the cliche one. Okay. Like, how many can I name? All of them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Starting out with the ladies. Uh, we got Beyonce. Okay. Course, you know, I need to know how she be doing all them riffs and runs, y'all. She need to give me her secrets. Yeah. Rihanna. Okay. Miss Rihanna, yes. You think she would make music again? Rihanna? Yeah. She just dropped a song. She did? Come on, pay attention. Okay, my bad. She's giving it to us. My bad. My bad. Up. I ain't no know that. forever. We ain't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, and, and Rihanna has gave so much to the music industry. Yeah. So when she, whenever she come back, I'll be waiting on Auntie. Yeah. So, so. Rihanna for sure. Um, who else? Adele. I mean, you got Janae Aiko. I mean, oh my God, like, 
so many different people. My mind is going as far as like Mary J. Blige, Mariah Carey. Okay. Like, like it goes deep. Drake, 21 what? Savage, Megan Lil Baby, Megan Thee Stallion, okay. Miss Mulatto, or okay. kind of Big Lotto, because yeah, I know she kind of changed like her that. name. Uh, who else? Like Coyla Ray, um, Chloe Bailey, Hallie, you know, all of them. Like, I, it's so many people. The like, whole I industry. If I miss it, Thug, if they ever let my boy out. Yeah. Gunna, like, all of them. Let like, them folks out. G Herbo, like, G-Herbo. It, it just go. it's so different. Like, it goes everywhere. Like, all of them. <laughs> all of them. It's all all of them. All, all of them. <laughs> For sure. Man, I don't got no more questions. Yeah, Jada Marion, I want to thank you for coming Stay on Official Side thank Fashion. You we appreciate you. It was hella ghetto before we started, guys. Yeah, very ghetto. I want that to be known. The most ghetto we ever been yeah. but it's okay though we still got a great interview exactly. and again we want to thank you for coming on sharing your thoughts your ideology on, your story also, bro, yeah geez, go ahead one of the last episodes of 2022 man so yeah we appreciate you like a ton so thank you for being on here yeah thank guys. You guys for having me no problem and it's not it's the first time not the last time yeah Uh-oh. so it's gonna happen yeah. again Uh-oh. again Stay tuned, y'all. Reboot. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Official side fashion. Out. Out. Peace.